we've already heard from Jeff Merkley earlier this morning about about energy conservation, right? If we're to move towards sustainability, there's two pillars to this movement. There is energy reduction through conservation, but we're never going to bring down energy use to zero. So how do we make sure that the energy we do use is from sustainable sources? Here's an example of what's sustainable. This, on the left, is the amount of solar energy that we have on the planet available every year. That's annual. These little little asteroids here <laughs> are the amount of finite fuels that are available totally. That's the rest of them from both uh, coal and uranium, petroleum and natural gas. So if we're talking about sustainable, we need to invest in this kind of energy. And we have choices here. Where should Oregon invest? There are places in the world who've made that commitment to invest in renewable energy and one of them was Germany. And here you see the growth in solar PV installation from 1990 to 2007. There's something very interesting about this chart. In the middle, you'll see that PV starts to increase dramatically. 2001 is when they instituted their feed-in tariff law, and that's what made the difference. So much so that by 2006, um, just five years later, this yellow hit, this is the world market in solar energy, the world production of solar electricity. The yellow is Germany. In five years, they've become the world's leader in solar energy production, over half of the world's solar electricity. What down the bottom is the U.S. with 9%, okay, as opposed to 54%. And this is 2006. In 2010, to update this chart, Germany has now 17 gigawatts of solar installed. The U.S. has a little over two. Okay. There's no excuse for that. We're 23 times the size of Germany. So it's clearly the policy. Okay, so where does the solar in, in Germany come from? Most of it is small and locally owned. It's on residential rooftops. It's on farmers' barns, by the way. Almost half of Germany's solar comes from barn rooftops on farms. On apartment buildings, on churches and schools, and libraries, public buildings, soccer stadiums. It's not from big solar arrays in the desert, because Schmidt doesn't have many deserts. But anyway, um, and that means it's locally owned, and it means the jobs are all over the place. Not just a few jobs here and there, but they're all over the country. And an interesting thing to do to note that when you when you get a boom in renewable energy production, it brings down the costs. In the last five years, the cost of solar systems in Germany have come down by half. That's another feature of the feeding tariff policy. It actually reduces the cost of renewable energy. So we talked a minute about, ago about the jobs. Here's a chart that shows job creation and job increases in all these renewable energy resources. It's not just for solar, it's for any renewable resource. So that means wind and solar and biomass and biogas, and, and here it could be wave and geothermal. And in 2004, 6, and 7, which are the different colored bars, you'll see that um, jobs grew in each of those sectors in the years 2004, 6, and 7, and they're continuing to grow. By 2007, Germany created 250,000 jobs in the country in renewable energy. That's now up to 370,000 jobs in the renewable energy industry. There is one shining star for renewable energy in North America, and that's Ontario. Ontario put into place its feed-in tariff in 2010, and in its first year it signed its accepted applications for 22,000 renewable energy installations around the province. That's a lot of broad renewable energy development. To create 5,000 megawatts of renewable energy, and completing those contracts will require 43,000 jobs. It attracted $9 billion in private investment into the province, and it will allow them to close all their coal plants by 2014. And you would be a customer of the Ontario Power Authority. You go up to their website and you see this price schedule with pipes down the side and a column for the price per kilowatt that you're guaranteed to get paid for 20 years. This is what a feed-in tariff is. It's a guaranteed, predetermined, fixed price that you get paid per kilowatt hour for a specific length of time. Usually it's a 20-year contract. And those prices are calculated over time to get to pay off your costs and give you a return on investment. So it makes sense to put your money into renewable energy. And this is what happens in Ontario. 
So if you were uh, putting up rooftops solar, you'd know you'd be guaranteed 80 cents Canadian per kilowatt hour for everything you produce for 20 years. If you're a farmer who wants to put a methane digester in to make electricity from animal waste, you get guaranteed 19 and a half cents. For a wind turbine, it's 13 and a half cents, guaranteed. And those, that is what created that massive growth so quickly. Um, in Germany, one of the reasons it grew so quickly is because Germans realized if they put their, if they put up solar, they could make money. And so they're taking money out of other investments like a CD, putting it on their roof. Their campaign slogan when they got this law plan in place was a piggy bank on your roof. <laughs> okay, so um, how can we get a feed-in tariff in Oregon? You need to pass a law. You need to pass a feed-in tariff law. And the law requires that the utilities offer every utility customer a contract that guarantees them a connection to the grid so you can feed your energy in. It guarantees them uh, a price per kilowatt hour that is, safe, is fixed, is predetermined, it's fixed, and it stays in place for a specific length of time. And it must be calculated to cover your cost of generation plus a return on your investment. Otherwise, why would you put your money there? You'll keep it in some other investment. Area. So, uh, guaranteeing your connection and guaranteeing to buy everything you produce. Right now, we have net metering in place. Okay, but if you, which is, means it pays you what you buy energy for, which is cheap fossil fuels, right? So it doesn't begin to cover your real costs over time. And if you produce more than you use in a year, you give it to charity. So that it's, it's not a good investment vehicle. But this is what changes. And the question is, what can you do? And what you can do is tell your friends, your elected officials, your neighbor, that there is a solution to producing renewable energy quickly, and it's this crazy thing called the feed-in tariff, but it works. <laughs> crazy name for a great idea. Actually, it just means, a tariff in this sense just means payment for energy that you feed into the grid, okay? Um, you can sign up with OREP because we have an email list and we're, we're trying to gather a, a group of people together to influence, for instance, the governor. Uh, and you can, if you haven't, if you belong to an organization, encourage them to learn more about this. We can come out and talk with, with them if you like. To join an alliance, we're putting together an, an alliance of organizations that says, yes, this is the kind of renewable energy policy we want in Oregon. This is how they did it in Ontario. And it was a broad alliance of uh, labor and health and the faith community and environmental defense groups. And they got this policy in place. Um, that's what we'd like to do here. Next action is to provide input to the governor's energy plan. He's announced the formation of a 10-year energy plan for Oregon. We want to make sure there's a feed-in tariff as part of that energy plan, and we would invite you to, to sign up to help make that happen.